Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. My dad has been a bit strange ever since he returned from Le Pousse. Laurelin? You work best under pressure. Yanni, beauty, TV. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the fan carpet. It's, uh, it's wonderful to speak to you today. Um, so, how's everything going? Very well, you know, yeah. very happy. Things are picking up again, filming and stuff, so it's so nice, you know. Okay, brilliant. All right, so um, if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the entertainment industry? Yeah, well, it, I always knew I was an actor. Since I was a kid, I was kind of obsessed with it. So I started as a child actor. Uh, but I have kind of some memories when I was five or six and I'm asking to my mom, like, is there an audition? Is there something coming up? And I remember my mom at the time telling me, yes, work on a birthday party. And in my head, I'm like, I think she's lying to me. It's just bullshit. It's just <laughs> me to be happy. You know, she wants me to be happy and busy. But it's yeah, a clear desire since I was a child. I was, I always... I always felt connected to that industry and being an actor and being an artist. It's, it's been my life. Great. Did you uh, did you find yourself putting on shows and things for your family and friends? Yes, I did. As a child actor, I was doing a lot of uh, popular TV TV shows here. Uh, you know, the family at first are very excited and happy and supportive. Then when they understand you're working 24 seven, cancel the holidays, don't go to school, out of the blue, you know, they don't want you to be in this industry anymore, but it's too late. You already put the fingers in the plug, you know, and you're already addicted to it. So it's a, you know, when you're young, they're happy. Eventually they realize the reality of this job, which is you have to commit a lot and it's a lot of sacrifices and hard work. And sometimes mm -hmm. they wish you do something more conventional and safe. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what was it your, about your character in, in Nightbook that stood out to you to make you want to play her? Well, to be honest, it was, uh, it was lovely for me to play. Uh, she's pregnant in the movie and uh, I have two kids myself, uh, but they're nearly teenagers now. I had them when I was really young and uh, I was, I mean, there was a real appeal to me to be able to connect to that period of my life, you know, of being pregnant. As well, she's, uh, she's really trying hard. She's working hard. She's trying to prove herself and its qualities as well. I identify a lot too. She has a long distance relationship. I don't know, there was a lot of things uh, I connected as a woman. Um, and obviously it was a huge challenge to shoot an interactive movie. Uh, it was incredible, you know, I was really flattered. They thought about me and excited. Awesome. Um, so is that how you related to her with your with your shared um, shared experiences? Yes, as well, she's, you know, it's, um, there's like a psychological aspect to it as well. She keeps thinking she's losing her sanity mm -hmm. and it's really something I love to explore. I think as an actor, you play a lot with your mind and your own limits how you dive into a character and into a world and sometimes you feel really lost and even as an you know as an artist you're like maybe i should stop maybe i'm crazy why am i pushing so hard you know and all those questions in the storyline were really justified and it's something i could you know go and dive into and yes definitely it's something i was attracted to great um so uh, do you have any memories from filming that will stick with you throughout your career of course Lots of yeah. memories, you know, you, I mean, I grew up on set. So obviously you discover yourself with your own characters. But then of course you love to do this job because it's an amazing, you know, it's, it's beautiful to be able to tell the story of someone. But besides that, the, the human adventure to be on set with talented people trying to tell a story together. You create so many memories, like stuff that stay with you forever. And 
you know, I, I worked with Phoebe Waller-Bridge on our first show called Crashing. Mm -hmm. It was a band of actors. We are very close to each other. We have the best memories from that set. It, we were just laughing all day long and creative. And it's just some memories are, you know, that's really worth it. You feel sometimes it's a tough industry, but for those moments, it's completely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I understand that this was shot remotely. So how did you find working with Alex Lightman? Oh, wow. Alex was amazing. He's a... Uh, it was really interesting because we had a lot of uh, rehearsals, uh, body work. Uh, as well, we had an um, intimacy coordinator for some of the scenes, even though there was no love scenes involved. Uh, it was to deal with the pregnancy and like stuff I can't spoil. But mm -hmm. um, he was really careful. He was really present for me, even though we were, you know, uh, countries apart. Um, it was a real collaboration. I feel, you know, you don't have a choice because you're online. I mean, he really took care of me, of my mental health as well. It was, it was a tough shoot, to be honest, because we had so many journeys to explore and it's horror and it's a psychological thriller. And I was on my own doing everything, you know, the light, the sound, <laughs> acting, clapping, plugging the computer in the morning and stuff like that. So eventually you do love this job because it's a team. There was a team, but in the you know, in my reality, I was really lonely. Mm. And uh, but Alex was really was really here for me. I felt really connected to him, and he, he gave me a lot of freedom as well to explore all the darkness of the characters. So that's really good. Um, so Nightbook is is pretty unique um, in the sense that it's an interactive film. Um, was that part of the appeal for you? Yes, completely. Obviously, I didn't know <laughs> what it would be. I mean, the continuity thing is insane. And how you film it as well, you film by unit, meaning sometimes you have 15 sequences because it's option A, A1, A2, A3. A so you just do all these options and you go back to a medium place and you go back, explore the whole different journey. So it was really, really hard as well. You know, it's only on you. So even though the actors, the other actors were online with me, like on Zoom, I mean, you have a big responsibility and, uh, and of course you don't want to fail and you, you don't, you know, you want the shoot to have a good rhythm and stuff, but it means learning many, 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 many things, many options, and each time try to find some truth in it. Um, so of course it was a huge appeal, but I had no idea how we were going to do it. The script was more than 450 pages when a regular script is 100 pages, 120, you know. And yeah, it was a, it, it was a lot of work and like a crazy gymnastic, you know, to say, okay, where, where was I before? What are we doing? Oh, okay, we're going on this branch of the story. Okay, okay, so this didn't happen or this could happen. It, I mean, Alex was completely on top of it. He had this, is a shot. I think it, you know, something from video games and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was more like a visual uh, thing. He could see the story on paper. Uh, obviously for me, this wouldn't work. I could only work with emotion. So it was like, okay, I go on this emotion path. Now I'm going on this one. It was, uh, it was a lot of work, um, but really, really a privilege and exciting for an actor because you can really stretch and your character could really go in different directions, you know, all the possibilities. So it's really good. Was it all mapped out um, in the beginning or was there room like, to play around and, and go in different tangents when you wanted to? Uh, I would say not storyline wise. You would, I wouldn't be able to say, oh, maybe we can, maybe she can do that, you know? Uh, but line wise, completely. If something wasn't natural for me, uh, it was really important. You know, we connect uh, to how they speak. We own the character and the language and stuff. So know with the relationship she has with her fiance with her dad and stuff i could use my own vocabulary especially because i'm french and i'm addressing my dad sometimes and stuff so we would you know of course for this they were completely open and we could change but storyline wise it was very complicated <laughs> and there was no way i could get into that great so th this is more of a horror psychological thriller but do you have any preferred genres and any favorite films and TV. Somehow, weirdly enough, in the UK, I did a lot of comedies when actually I never did any comedies back in France. It's really not my thing. 
maybe that maybe there's a weird connection for me with British humor. I'm not sure I get it actually. I'm not sure why I'm funny, but like when I started in the UK nearly 10 years ago, I was mostly working like Phoebe Waller Bridge, Matt Berry, lots of people, you know, were like very, very good in comedies. Um, that's not my favorite genre at all. I actually like drama. Um, yeah, that's definitely, you know, I, I love to look for some truth and uh, put myself in danger. Um, I love action as well, you know, I have, I'm very, I love extreme sports. Um, I used to uh, skydive, I'm a big fan of boxing as well and stuff. So, you know, I love all the action stuff, but generally, yes, I would go for uh, drama. And I mean, it was my first horror movie. Uh, and that's definitely something that I connect with as well. Okay, uh, so what would be your dream role? <laughs> well, I think, uh, you know, I'd love to play a sexual badass, something like that, a mix of a uh, strong female, uh, owning yourself, owning your sexuality, owning my age, I'm 40 years old, you know, I think it's uh, an amazing time for women. Uh, so I'd love to be able to, you know, do something with a strong female character. And uh, that requires action as well. Maybe a Marvel. I'm not sure about the sexuality, though. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, that'd be yeah. Uh, well, Marvel have been killing it for like t over ten years now. So yeah, you know, um, amazing. So, yeah. And they and they just released um, Black Widow. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So why not? Um, are there any other aspects of the entertainment industry that you'd like to pursue? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, I think um, because I started so young, um, eventually, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing to be an actor, but I do feel there's a time as well where I'd love to produce. I'm writing and I've been like sometimes producing stuff and it's something, I think I have the right energy for it. I love to, when I believe in a project and when you believe in a story, it's not so much about creating something for yourself or for your friends. It's really about connecting with a story and, and feeling like it's an amazing opportunity for people to jump in because there's really something you can defend and a story to say. So that's really something I'm into. And uh, writing, I think my writing is probably <laughs> a bit too, you know, female, funny. I'm, I'm, I'm writing more comedies actually, even though it's not my job as an actress. Um, but I don't think, writing is just nice, you know, because I don't know, I think I read so many scripts Sometimes you just, and so many things happen in my own life, obviously, like everybody else. So many stories, I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. Um, so of course I capture all those moments and I, I wrote a couple of scripts, but that's not my passion. I think it's really, really hard. And uh, you know, it's, yeah, hours behind the computer. It's really tough. I actually prefer producing because you get a team together, you find the right people. And it's amazing to find, you know, your members, you know, when you find the right person, it's so exciting. So yeah, I'd love to go see you as well. Absolutely, awesome. Um, so, how did you find working with Colin? Because uh, obviously, oh. he's, a, he's a legend. He's amazing. I mean, we had such a good connection. It was good because we always we had thanks to Alex, we had like you know a couple of days of rehearsal, so we actually spent some time you know online, <laughs> like mm. everything else. We spent some time online. He's a he's a lovely man. He's so talented very very good actors it was uh i mean i love our scenes and stuff so it was really good to be working with him brilliant um who inspires you in the industry well i think you know there's i'm really lucky i'm working in a time where lots of women are really active in this industry and you know changing and bringing strong content obviously my friend phoebe waller bridge is i'm one of our biggest fans but I'm thinking as well, you know, uh, Reese with a Spoon, I'm thinking Nicole Kidman, Kate Blanchett, who's been producing these amazing Netflix shows recently. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really, you know, fascinated by all these uh, women who are writing or producing. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, Carrie Mulligan was just in um, uh, Promising Young Woman, so yes. that was another good one. Yes, um, or even uh, I May Destroy You, it's all of this, you know, it's like, it's a brave content, uh, it's true story based on true behaviors, what we experience, 
as women in real life or, or in this industry, the morning show, you'll, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's a very, very exciting time. Well, it's, absolutely. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's great. I'm looking forward, looking forward to all of it. Um, with the popularity of streaming services like a Netflix, what do you think the future of cinema is? I'm a big, I mean, I am such a big fan of uh, platforms, you know, I've uh, got them all, Apple, Netflix, Amazon. I think, you know, for me, it's, yeah, even though my generation obviously was cinema, I grew up, you know, going to the movies and I would go like several times a week. I truly appreciate actually watching movies on platforms on my computer. It's something as well, you know, very personal. And anytime, you know, uh, you, you can watch, you can watch. It's amazing. Anytime you want, it's there for you, available, all this amazing content. I don't know. You know, it's um, obviously I haven't been back to the movies. It only reopened now uh, mm. recently in Paris. And I was trying to remember last time I was in the cinemas. It was nearly two years ago because I was in London doing a play just before lockdown, I was at the Young Vic. So I was working every night. I was recording something daytime. So I haven't had the time to go to the movies for so long. I'm sure, you know, when I'm going to go back, I'm, I'm going to feel emotional. And, as a, you know, of course, I have memories of movies and to be in this room and actually have a shared experience with other people, with strangers. And you can feel the room. You can feel the emotion in the room when something happens. And, it's beautiful. Well, actually, now I just remember what was my last movie, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And, you know, and there was this moment when Brad Pitt removed the t-shirt and there was this silence in the room. Like, oh. And like this moment where people, there was a silence and then everyone in the room broke laughing and, you know, we were just all laughing and it was a collective, you know, emotion and, you know, so. I think a space for everything. I believe, you know, sometimes it's hard for independent movies, uh, young creators doing TV shows, creating t series and stuff. It's hard to get a place in the movies. It's, it's really difficult. You need, you know, here in France, the financing side is, you need a channel, you need a distributor, you need, it's really hard for independent movies to get to have a release. I believe the platforms actually might be you know, they're looking for content. It might be easier for young people creating. I believe there's space for everything, you know, and there's definitely more spaces for actors. So I'm very happy, you know, we can be in the movies, be on TV and be on the platform. So yeah, as actors, yeah. Guys, it's exactly the same, you know, from it's like this movie being released on Steam and PlayStation, and Xbox, all of this. You know, I'm, I'm so happy because you access people's home and houses and you access a lot of people, but I think as an actor, it doesn't change anything if it's for the movies or if it's a, for a platform. What matters is always the performance, the story, and the character. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it, it gives more variety. Uh, as an actress, it gives you like <laughs> more, more you know? opportunity. Exactly. And I believe with the platforms, to be honest, there's more international co-productions. Mm -hmm. Definitely for someone like me who like to, you know, I like to act in English. It's like, I like to act in Spanish as well, a little bit in Hebrew. There's more possibilities. Like how many times do I have a big film, a co-production? Most of the time they would go for big, big names because they need that to raise all the millions actually mm -hmm. to shoot the movie. Actually the platforms, they're creating constantly lots of co-productions because they want to create in the country of, uh, you know, they want to create in every country where they have Netflix or Amazon and stuff like that. So. There's more opportunities for bilingual actors. Cool. How, how many how many languages do you know? Well, French, <laughs> English, Spanish, and uh, Hebrew. <laughs> voilà. A, a little bit of Norwegian because I shot uh, a movie in Norway, and I, I did another movie about base jump, and there was a lot of Norwegian base jumpers. So I actually started to learn the language, you know. Oh. But not, I can't say I'm fluent. Just little things yeah and oh, awesome. a, little bit. a bit more than bilingual then <laughs> yeah bi no. bilingual is bias too so yeah, well, yeah. You know, i think <laughs> yeah, but believe me i keep the french accent everywhere <laughs> it's not right. like <laughs> i know the language but i can't drop the french accent <laughs> even if i wanted to <laughs> yeah well why it's your, it's your heritage it's your home so 
Yeah. But anyway, I tried, believe me. I took all the <laughs> Nothing we can do about my French accent. This is a big challenge. <laughs> right. Cool. Um, so, what are you, so now that things are opening back up, what are you looking forward to getting back to? Do you have any projects that you're waiting to get back to? Well, I can't wait to go back to the UK, to be honest. And uh, this is where I work mostly. Most of the times it could be, you know, either on a US show or UK shows. Uh, I don't work as much actually in France as I was working a lot when I was younger. And then 10 years ago, when things shifted for me internationally, really London become my, became my uh, home. Uh, yeah, well, lots of big additions. So waiting to hear from them. And, you know, I can't wait to just go back in the train and, be back in town and film again so we'll see we'll see wonderful um so where, where can we find you online to keep up with everything you're doing well i have like so the tv show of uh, phoebe waller bridge is on netflix but i think in the uk it's on maybe channel four you know the website on channel four uh, yeah like four ad yeah, yeah exactly. four ad four on i think what did they call it did they change it to four on demand Not yes sure. Exactly. So basically, crashing is on that. I've got as well a show on HBO called Avenue Five with you, Glory. It's uh, Amanda Yanucci, but I think in the UK it's on. Uh, is it on BBC? I think it's on BBC. Probably. So basically, I've got uh, yes, these two shows on um, crashing and Avenue Five. Okay, great. Um, uh, what about? Uh, are you active on social media at all? I'm not. Oh, you're not. on social media, I know, which is like, like for an actor, people are like, why? Why do you do that? I'm not. It's true. I take distances from uh, social media. I decided that, you know, it's good to do my work on set and then just, you know, do my artistic things at home discreetly. No one need to know, you know, which swimming suit I'm wearing, and which handbags and which makeup and <laughs> where I'm having food and stuff. No, no, no one knows that. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. but, well, you know, you can, I mean, people will see hopefully the night book and I hope, you know, I'm sure there will be some social media about that where, you know, I could get access to people's yeah, comments. Yeah, there is. I, think there I is. am on Vimeo actually, like all my reels and stuff are on Vimeo on the Julie Dress, so people could see my work there. Great. And um, what are you hoping audience will take away from the night book when they get a chance to play it? Well, you know, I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I just, uh, I hope people will have, you know, will play several times, actually. I hope they'll, they'll enjoy it enough to see all the different journeys because we went in very broad directions, different directions and stuff. So, you know, first of all, I hope people will like it, enjoy it, and then we'll want to play it several times just to see how crazy the story is and how far it could go. Mm. Yeah, um, la, uh, with other uh, other games that I've played uh, from Wales Interactive, they have various things that you can unlock. Um, unlock because I've, I've covered, we've covered uh, two others before this. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, um, it was. So you're uh, more experienced than me, actually. Because yeah, was, f five, uh, co the complex, and then five dates. Ah, so uh, you put? Yeah, I heard of five dates because that's the one they shot just before. Did you enjoy yeah. it? I did, yeah. I thought they were oh great. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy them. Um, I, I'm not. I don't have an Xbox or a yeah. PlayStation, so I, I play them on Steam. On Steam. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's great and it's wonderful to be able to have that. So to fun. have that. Yeah, and they're they're really fun. I really enjoy them. Wow. Well, I can't wait. Even notebook. Even can notebook. I, I really enjoy. Uh, can I can I find five dates on Steam? Yes. It's, it's on really there. Yeah. Fun. It's on there. Yeah. I should try. Yeah, because I downloaded Steam now, you know, like, okay, I need to download the thing if I want to play my movie. Uh, I'm actually yeah. I'm not really a gamer, so of course it was like, oh, how does that work? Oh, I don't have the right system. I have to update my stuff. But yeah. was, okay, I will try. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're on there. Um, but yeah, I enjoy them. Um, and if, uh, I, I'm never sure whether to call them a game or to call them a film because it's an interactive film. So yes, I mean, my experience, obviously, the only experience I had was on Netflix with the Black Mirror and the Snatch. Mm. I actually I played it several times. You know, I was like, no, you know, each time I was dying. I was like, no way. You know, I was like, I'm sure that was the other direction. I should have took the different branch. I really enjoyed that. 
So, you know, I, I can't wait to, to explore it as well. Yeah, excellent. I asked, I asked the production, I was like, okay, can I have a link, you know? So even if it's just one direction, they're like, no, no, you have to play it. You know, you have to, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm looking forward to unlocking some uh, some more of it. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this has been wonderful. Um, I will leave it there. And um, yeah, congratulations with the film. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to whatever you do next. Thank you so much, and I hope you'll enjoy playing the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it the first time. Thanks very much. Take care. <laughs> Merci. Ciao. Take care, bye. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. Book. Yes, please. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.